A member of the so-called Free Speech Party just proposed legislation that would abolish the Democratic Party in what is allegedly the freest state in the country. Intrigued? Then click that like and subscribe and enjoy the video. So you folks have heard me say a time or two that the Republican Party really isn't good for anything other than political grievances and political grudges and niche culture war issues that have no real relevance or substantive impact on day-to-day -day Americans, including most of their own supporters. And unfortunately, I've got to bring you yet further proof of that because a state senator from Florida, so not somebody from Florida who serves in the U.S. Congress, but somebody who serves in, the, in Florida's House of Representatives, a state senator, uh, just proposed legislation. His, uh, his name is Blaze Angolia. He proposed a bill that would formally abolish the Democratic Party. Let's talk about it. Some people just want to have some people want to have uncomfortable conversations about certain subjects. Senator Blaze Angolia is sponsoring the Ultimate Cancel Act, which would eliminate all political parties that once used slavery as part of its platform. So obviously, he doesn't formally name the Democratic Party in his legislation. Like if you look at it. At no point is the word Democrat even said. The qualification for what would be banned would be any party that once had slavery as an official part of its platform. And now this, of course, is a common right-wing talking point, so we should probably break here and explain the situation. It is true that the Democratic Party was once the party that defended slavery in the United States. So during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, and his opponents politically were Democrats. Now, if history stopped at 1865, uh, the Republican Party in 2023 would have a point, right? They would be able to virtue signal, thump their chest, and be like, we're the party of freedom, Democrats are the party of slavery. Except, of course, time moved on and history continued after 1865, and what happened was the Southern switch. So over time, the Republican Party became, instead of progressive, it became conservative. And the Democratic Party, instead of becoming conservative, became progressive over time as a, over the decades in the post-reconstruction era the parties effectively switched platforms that's why republicans back in lincoln's day were relatively progressive and opposed slavery and wanted to abolish the institution whereas now most racists are associated with the republican party who are, who um, in the kkk are members of the kkk more likely to be republican or democrat in 2023 republican are you more likely to see a confederate flag at a Republican rally or among Republicans or Democrats? Republicans, right? So this is just a, a BS gotcha move, right? Trying to weaponize the Democrats' very shady, sketchy past and ignore the, what, 160 years that have occurred since then? Anyway, so he said, the report says, while Democratic Party isn't mentioned in the bill, as we just discussed, uh, the senator sponsoring it in Golia said that's his target. For years now, leftist activists have been trying to cancel people and companies for things they've said or done in the past. This includes the removal of statues and memorials and the renaming of buildings, he said. Using this standard, it would be hypocritical not to cancel the Democratic Party itself for the same reason. The measure would switch Democratic voters to no-party voters or give them the option of choosing another party. The Democratic Party, and we just discussed this, um, so let's see. According to Angolia's bill, the Division of Elections would decertify any political party that has previously advocated for or been in support of slavery or involuntary servitude. Registered voters of that party would receive notices from the state that their party had been canceled and now that they're no party and they, that they're now no party voters. As for the canceled Democratic Party, it could re-register with the state so long as the name is substantially different from the name of any other party previously registered. Angolia said Democrats should be called upon to face their past. Some people want to have uncomfortable conversations about certain subjects, so let's have those conversations. We did have those conversations over the span of decades. And the fact of the matter is that this is a false equivalence that Angolia is making in terms of talking about canceling people for their past or their statues. Let's, let's be clear about this. There are people on social media, cringe people who go through certain celebrities or other people's ancient history and try to make a fuss about it. And it is cringe and it is awkward and sometimes it goes too far. There's no question about it. But the Democratic Party isn't trying to cancel anybody. Joe Biden isn't trying to cancel anybody. Chuck Schumer isn't trying to cancel anybody. Now, if somebody says or does something really bad, they don't get it glossed over five minutes later, right? There's like an informal statute of limitations, right? If somebody does something reprehensible and it's recent, probably should be called out and addressed. 
What Angolia is trying to do here is dig up a 160-year history of the Democratic Party and leaving out the fact that in the modern era, people who would have supported slavery, again, like the KKK or Confederate sympathizers, people like that, have their current home and have had their current home for decades in the Republican Party. So it's obviously, it's again, a false equivalence. It's super hypocritical. But it's also another demonstration where it's not even just at the federal level. This is a state politician. This is a state senator. So it is a state actor. It is a government employee. And instead of proposing legislation, because again, Florida has its issues, right? I mean, not only is it hit, it seems like every other month with some sort of climate disaster and collapsing buildings a couple of years ago, things like that, skyrocketing uh, insurance premiums and real estate issues. Instead of proposing meaningful legislation that would help his constituents, he's doing stuff like this. Now, obviously, it's not going to pass, right? Um, well, it may pass, I don't know, but I mean, because they have a Republican supermajority in Florida and, uh, and uh, a Republican governor who would almost certainly eat this up. I imagine it would be struck down federally if the, the case were taken to the, uh, to the Supreme Court or sued in federal court. But anyway, this is a culture war issue, right? This is not substantive. This is not helpful to Floridians in, in the slightest. And so anyway, um, this is where the Republican Party's priorities are, okay? This is what they're good for. They're not good for helping people. They're not good for responsibly governing. They're good for political grievances and gotchas. And that's all this is. Hey, you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, and I hope that you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And if you absolutely hated the video, the best revenge for you is also to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. That'll teach me. If you want to share an opinion or share some feedback, go ahead and leave a comment, all right? 2023 is a year of change, hence the aggressive rebrand and commitment to new content. Inspired by my friends Luke Beasley and STV Philly, my personal goal for this channel is to hit 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I'm hoping you'll do me a solid by spreading the word and the videos to potential fans and hate watchers alike. And in the meantime, we'll be pondering politics again with you very soon.